welcome to the Digging Deeper Podcast, brought to you by New Hope Church. My name is Matt, and I'm so very excited to dive into today's topic. Before we get there, though, let's go around the room and see what everybody's doing. Sarah, how you doing? Uh, great, and there's just a lot of emotions this week, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's good. Uh, my husband was in staff meeting for the second time. Mm-hmm. It's exciting. He starts full-time uh, next week. Yeah. So exciting. Um, and we just had goodbye lunch for Ruben, mm-hmm. who... Mm-hmm. Uh, has done a year long oh, man, Ilan yeah. Moore internship, but actually is my longest standing staff member because he <laughs> came on and worked 10 hours a week. And anyways, you yeah. should go check out the podcast uh, Matt just did with him if you want to hear mm-hmm. more of that story. But so lots of um, beginnings and endings at this yeah. time of year. Um, and I also am just always really reminded when I see my colleagues go back to PD, mm-hmm. like I would have been back to work on Monday. Yeah, And just so thankful for the privilege of getting to be free from another job mm-hmm. to get to do this full time. And, and that's just such a privilege. And I'm always reminded of that. That's this time cool. Of year. That's so, good. Yeah. That's cool. We were just talking about reminders uh, earlier. You and I, Nate, yeah. but how are you doing, buddy? We were, we were also talking about how you're still so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I am still so tired. <laughs> and how I have rebounded. You, bou- yes. you bounce back yeah, so I'm, much faster. I'm bouncing than I do. back. <laughs> yeah. I'm do- he is younger. <laughs> that is true. That is very true. Actually. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. Just, you know, back into some healthy rhythms. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's only been three days in it is feels nice yeah so uh yeah it was a crazy couple months and i'm sure for the rest of my life i'll look back on those and go that was nuts yeah it was yeah uh, and yeah as sarah said what a privilege what an mm. opportunity what an honor and it's amazing to watch god show up and do what i can't ever have imagined and mm. so excited mm. as we get ready for fall to go what's next you yeah. know we got the ontario land tribunal in october and i'm just excited for um uh, open door after open door, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. miracle yeah. after miracle. Yeah. Yep. He keeps uh, coming through. So doing great, buddy. Awesome. Yeah. Glad to hear it. PT, how you doing? I'm doing great. Mm-hmm. I was exhausted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a great cure for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All rest. That's right. Uh, I woke up Monday and said, I don't have to do anything today. Mm. I ended up doing a lot of work. <laughs> but it started off really slow yeah and uh that was good mm-hmm. and i just came from the hospital mm-hmm. instead of the funeral home because mm. buddy our friend dale was oh man teams of surgeons on, on numerous days just mm-hmm. part of the roller coaster of day camp yeah. yeah and it was uh someone someone from the church saw me there and it was like are you okay and i go yes i am because mm-hmm. i'm not at the funeral home yeah, <laughs> he's truth. recovering well. So, yeah, yeah thankful yeah, for God. good, mm. good things like that. Yeah. How's Matt? <laughs> I'm doing. You're well. tired. I'm a little tired still, but yeah. better than I was on the end of Sunday. I was really tired on Sunday. Oh man, yeah. By the Amen, end of the end of I was going. Amen. I think I need a nap. <laughs> but uh, no, doing really well. I'm I'm kind of same boat as Nate. Just really excited for the fall and all the crazy cool mm-hmm. stuff coming down the pipe. And um, I'm still I still in this like wow space with God with. New Hope West, to be honest with you. Like, <laughs> like I don't have the nostalgia piece that you guys have, which is such a cool mm-hmm. experience, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But just having walked through there for the first time and thinking, this would be a really good place to shoot a horror movie um, <laughs> because it just looks oh, so it terrifying. It was thunderbolts yeah. of lightning. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very <laughs> frightening. Was. Dead so bats, many bats. Right? Oh, wait, so all the bats. many dead yeah. bats. They were all dead. <laughs> that's true. Oh, I said, that's right. There was a that day was where you chased one out. <laughs> did you like chase one out? Actually, <laughs> Nate did. Yeah, it was well hilarious. Well and and, and the boy, our boys, yep, took care of another one in an nice. inhumane way. They did absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. bats need Jesus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they do. <laughs> but uh, but no, I'm still in this really cool space. Like even walking through those halls, I'm just going like, "There's no way we can do this. Yeah. Like this is it this is, is God showing up." It was up. overwhelming. It was absolutely. But but God showed up and brought. People like Ronnie, who just yeah. is like, hey, I've and got a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, you know, I've got time. Let me do the thing. And, Crazy. you know, the work that was done, uh, thanks to our volunteers, just Amen. still blows my you mind. You guys rock. You know, it was good. still happening over there right now. It is. They're mm-hmm. yep, tearing There's out room bulkheads for you. and everything else. We're not so. done. That's right. No, <laughs> no, we are not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. I'm doing really well. I want to uh, spend the first little bit of the podcast actually today just debriefing the craziness of uh, both Summerfest and the last couple months has been so much going on and it's amazing and it's really important i think to stop and just reflect on what god's done so that's kind of the first part of this and then i actually want to get into Sweet. your sermon as well pt so first question uh let's just jump back to saturday which feels like two months ago um <laughs> summer vest what was the best part of summer fest for you guys this year what kind of stood out as the oh wow or this is amazing or whatever what, what do you thought Nate, why don't you start us out man yeah i mean it was uh, awesome to have so much more space mm-hmm. again 
I keep saying we've been praying for space, yeah. you know, for ministry to happen. Yeah. And uh, every day when we worked on the property over there for the last two months at lunch, we pray that that space will be filled mm-hmm. with worship and God's glory and his presence. And uh, yeah, I got to feel that and yeah. experience that, that this, the property was was rammed and busy and it yeah, it, it used leverage like every like even the inside was mm-hmm. used and uh, for his glory and we got to actually worship on the property again for the you know for first time for almost twelve years uh, we yeah. got to worship on that property mm-hmm. and so you know our initiative is filling Niagara with worship and the first thing we did <laughs> is put up a, a stage and yeah. worship and lead worship and, worship. and yeah. Uh, yeah. That was that was encouraging. I and I also, you know, w- w- one of the goals of of doing it there this year was to be a positive presence in the neighborhood and uh, to you know try to let them know like we're coming back and mm-hmm. we can't wait to 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 be your church here. And I think we did that. So like, yeah, kind of at the end of the day, mission accomplished as well. Yeah, feels really good uh, yeah. to know that that worked out that way. That's good. That's good. Check. 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 That's right. PT, what are your thoughts? You know, I, I, yeah, I, I was thinking pinball machine you know a pinball machine you're mm. banging banging around bing 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 no. and you're getting points and then once in a while it gets to that dangerous part and you flip it back in that's how i feel like my life has been since we closed the world for two weeks to flatten the curve <laughs> there's been some scary times yeah. but almost like god's blowing us away here god's blowing us away there god's blowing us away here it just i can't keep up I, it, nothing's normal mm-hmm. it's just one blow your mind awesome god thing to be back at Jordan, I don't think my emotions have caught up with that. People are going no. like, must feel really good, cool and nostalgic. I think it might. I just can't <laughs> believe. I, yeah. You know, I just can't believe everything God's doing constantly. And I'm so thankful and overwhelmed and grateful and humbled mm-hmm. and very, yeah, very mm-hmm. humbled by what he's doing. And I know the community wants us back. I, I've, I know that I live there. They're my neighbors. Mm-hmm. And, um, and they don't really know how much they want mm-hmm. and need us back. Mm-hmm. But we'll try and let them. What a great opening soon yeah. banner we put up with mm-hmm. thousands of people or however many people were there. Thousands of French fries. There were so Tens many of French thousands fries. of French so fries. So many French fries. <laughs> that's good. Sorry. That's convoluted, but that's where I'm at. <laughs> I'm, definitely, I'm definitely with PT on the like, yeah. I, I'm like, oh, I thought it'd be more emotional. And then all of a sudden some really specific thing makes that makes mm. that hit. Um, it was actually maybe three, four weeks ago, maybe more than that, actually. Anyway, we, we were having staff meeting at New Hope West, sitting in the sanctuary. And so it was very quiet because someone was giving, a, leading us in Devo. And I must confess, I did not pay attention to them at all mm-hmm. because <laughs> I could hear the sound of the lights because it was quiet enough that you could hear the lights. Mm. And you realize you're like, I never would have remembered. Be like, think about Jordan School and having church in there for 12 years. Yeah, the sound of the lights. But as soon as those lights turned on, it just reminded me of going in there on Wednesday nights for junior youth, being the first one to flick on the lights as they took 10 minutes to turn (laughs) on, going in with Dave, Mm -hmm. you know, being the first one in, 6.30 with him. I wasn't very useful, but he was. And I went along for the ride and (laughs) rolled out cables he told me to roll out. And just hearing the lights um, and like, honestly it still kind of smelled the same like both worse but now better <laughs> like now it was better than yeah. it was worse than yeah. it was originally yeah, yeah. and um you, you know walking around Summerfest, i realized i'm like man i thought i'd oh i guess i haven't been that emotional yet and then uh toby and lindy started leading worship and mm-hmm. then i was like wow we're back baby yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> and uh walking out the back of the one hallway with in flip-flops with the grass all over my feet and so much grass coming in. And it's like, yeah, this was every year at day camp. This was mm-hmm. the main door. Yeah. We went out and 12 years or I should have done the math since 2007 to mm-hmm. 2013, you know, like we were there for day camp and uh, just brings back all those memories of what we watch God do with our little fishes and loaves yeah. and just that expectancy of what he's going to keep doing. Yeah, that's yeah. one of my favorite things of Playland is all the pictures yeah. from every day camp. <laughs> it's so cool to see. Yeah, just, it's like a it's like just a visual history yeah. of what God's done. It's, yeah, it's really cool. So, yeah. for yeah. you guys, actually, since we're kind of on this topic, what does it feel like to come full circle back to New Hope West? I know you mentioned a little bit of it, but I mean, there's got to be a lot going on there in your heads of like, oh my word, here we are again. What's what's that been like for you guys? Yeah, I. I got baptized there, so yeah. to look at the spot where I got baptized mm-hmm. and 
you know, rem- good reminders there. Like we were saying at lunch, Matt, you know, yeah. a lot of the times we, we as Christians so easily forget everything. I mean, that's Old Testament to today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. And so it's cool. It's like a reminder to be there for sure. Uh, when we were there, though, we only had the gym area the majority <laughs> right. of the time. So mm-hmm. I, I we think never had the rest of that. To to be honest, I feel blown away by 26,000 square feet of space. Yeah. yeah. Like you and I we were just talking, how are we cleaning this? We got to <laughs> recruit true. more people. Like this is a lot of space. Oh, you started thinking about that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, now it's nice enough to there, clean. And we now we clean really it. do need to clean it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, oh, it's, it's, it, uh, I have felt personal burden of space mm. that mm. has given me anxiety and sleepless nights. Yeah. Uh, with our lack of space for ministry here. Mm-hmm. And um, so it, it is actually, you know, been heavy and I feel a huge weight off of me, not just to be back in the spot where we once worshiped, where I was baptized, where God mm-hmm. did amazing things, where mm-hmm. I taught kids church, where, you know, I'm not just happy to be back there uh, as I am to go like God just open, not, not yeah. only said you're going to get space, like you ha- but you're going to get way more than you had before. That's right. yeah. You're going to get space enough that, yeah, you w- you know, with his blessing, we will fill it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's great to see Summerfest fill those, that space. And it's great to hear that mm-hmm. our youth programs already this fall are ready to fill that space. And yeah. the homeschooling Praise groups God. are reaching out, trying to book space. And I'm going, I don't know, can you book space? I have no idea. So it's mm-hmm. great to actually have some options to do ministry mm-hmm. yeah. that, mm-hmm. instead of feeling like we're handcuffed. Mm-hmm. There's even like the practical things, obviously Summerfest, but even before that, we had to empty out one of our sea cans. Because yeah. we had to move some stuff around to put us side by side in. And it's like, we can send all of Easter and Christmas to yeah, New Hope West. That's right. Like, we, it doesn't have to go into people's houses. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to, like, <laughs> we actually have storage space, which, um, yeah, it was funny. Get I got to do a few tours at Summerfest and showing them the cupboard that's still there that still says New Hope Church, the one little <laughs> cupboard. They, they graciously allowed us to build. That was, and I was showing some people who are part of our key prep team for mm-hmm. junior youth and kids. She's like, so this was all of the storage that you had for kids church and junior youth. Um, but you know what else stuck out to me from those tours was getting to explain to people what we did to have church there. I'm like, so you'd come in the morning, flick on the lights. I take 10 minutes. Then you'd pull out the cart. <laughs> then you'd set up the black stage that is upstairs in kids worship right, right now in front stage. of there, then set up all the tech, then set up all the chairs, then have two services, then tear it all down and put it away. Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, that was a lot of work. I'm like, yeah, it was a lot of work. It was the best. <laughs> and, and it's still just a lot of hard work. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know something about this summer fest felt like, there's so many new people who yeah. participated in making it happen and getting to like share with them. Like this is, you know, I'm just as everything else I say, I'm just plagiarizing what PT said for, uh, you know, a couple decades of like, yeah, all ministry needs to happen is you pick up this piece of junk <laughs> and you walk it way out into the field. That's true. And then you do a thing. And then four hours later, you pick up the piece of junk, put it back in the truck and put it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And, but it takes so much of that. Mm. And it just is, you know, we were talking about this at, at staff meeting the other day, but, you know, Jesus said the problem is not with the harvest, it's with the laborers. Amen. And it's just ministry is a lot of hard work, mm-hmm. but it's the, it's the best yeah. when you get to do it and see what God does with it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's a reminder of the hard work. And Summerfest was then an, an excitement that so many more people now are in for that hard work. Mm. And man, what's God going to do with that? Yeah. Oh, good. PT. I backed in the driveway Friday after day camp Mm -hmm. and said, it just takes a lot of hard work. (laughs) I mean, there's the Holy Spirit, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the part that changes hearts and lives. That's That's our part. That's right. It's just a lot of hard work. And and, and as I say it, and I'm I'm grieved because I I know that lots of churches don't want to work hard. Mm -hmm. And it says, you know, pray for the laborers of the harvest. Not the spectators, not the people who, you know, ho- not the hobbyists mm-hmm. in the harvest, but labor. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, your labor in the Lord is not in vain, First mm-hmm. Corinthians yeah. fifteen fifty eight. right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So good on you, church. Well done. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny to hear some of the people who have been with New Hope since the, the days in Jordan. Yeah. They pine still in their back of their mind for that ridiculous, terrible circumstance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, Remember when we did this? Church in, a, in that change room. I, it, they, they go, oh, the nostalgia of hard work and labor is there yeah. because God was in that. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And we're going we're gonna to remember these days of tents and kids' church. Yeah. There are kids under stairwells and in closets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And we just ask the Lord to go like, okay, like we'll wait patiently, but when we're when you think we're ready, we're, we want to go. Yeah, yeah. And right. I feel a little bit like God's saying, "Okay, let's go." Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. So that's a that's a huge honor. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's, it's a sobering reality, but it's also yeah. a huge privilege. It was so exciting to show, do some of those tours with some of the junior youth and senior youth leaders, and take them in that classroom with the ten foot ceilings and the windows and this huge space. And I'm like, you, you faithful junior youth leader who has been doing life group outside without real heating. Mm-hmm. With lighting that's too dark for the kids to actually read the tiny print of the Bible, so we had to buy more expensive large print Bibles. Like, this is the room you get to do life group in. Mm-hmm. In like three weeks in September, yeah. you get to start having life Praise group there. Mm-hmm. And so we're so excited that junior youth starting right in September, the second night of junior youth, will be able to have breathing room because yeah. half of our life groups will be at New Hope Blast. Half mm-hmm. of our life groups will be here at First Street and then the next week they'll switch. So everybody's going to get to be at both uh, locations and we know it's going to be, you know, yeah. an amount of shuffling and driving and coordinating and carpools. But the fact that we'll have some breathing room mm-hmm. um, to have life groups in good spaces and to have uh, just really good quality space for them to be able to, you know, it's hard to do life group with grade five boys. Yeah. If you've never tried, <laughs> it's not easy. I've sat in on a couple of And those. when you have to have your grade five boy life group, in a storage room with hammers and other things like it's just that space is going to make so much difference to our life groups. And then senior youth will be able to start there in second term uh, with using both locations. So we're just really, really excited for that. Also on that note, and just briefly, Nate, maybe to share a little bit of kind of where we've come from and where we're going with, with that space. Yeah, I'll go quick. Because we got other good content. Well, other stuff we want to jump uh, into. Yeah, so the hope is to leverage the space as best we can for ministry starting this fall, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, so we will be able to do that, as Sarah said, with youth and junior youth with potential Bible course or other uh, meetings and offsite yeah. you know, locations, mm-hmm. podcast recording, stuff like that. We're going to yep. be leveraging that space you know, as soon as this, this fall. Uh, we're going to work diligently now to try to update and refresh the other part uh, of the, the building, which is the sanctuary lobby space. Um, which began yesterday with tearing down <laughs> ceilings and bulkheads today were torn down. So cabinets are coming out. So we're, we're prepping that space now. And so we're, we don't know how long that'll take. Yeah. Uh, we have the, you know, we're praying for laborers mm-hmm. and, yeah. uh, and, and resources to be able to make that happen. And so that's a little bit of the, the timeline is will the resources and laborers come forward? And if they do, then we'll move that project faster. Uh, but we'd love to try to have a service in there in, in beginning of 2025, Lord willing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see what what that looks like. But that's beauty. The people in New, at, out in Lincoln are asking, they hurry are. up! Yeah. They came yeah. to Summerfest, said, "I'll come you to First Street for now, but yeah. you better hurry up over yes, there." That's so. right. That's Why right. You Jesus. So yeah, that's the hope. Brother. That's the hope. No, that's good. Thank you guys for sharing a little bit of your insight and just your your experience over the last few months with so many different things going on. I really appreciate it. Uh, I want to shift gears a little bit now and jump into the sermon from Sunday because so good. Thank you for preaching on mm. that. Um, I don't think it's preached enough, and uh, we're going to spend some time on that. But I want to I want to focus on three areas that you had kind of highlighted, PT. And the, the first one was this idea of, of the dull hearing, becoming dull in your hearing, not being able to hear the voice of the Lord over time. And maybe as, you, as I ask this question, maybe if you can kind of give some context to that. Uh, but the question I want to ask you is why why is becoming dull of hearing so dangerous? Like you you warned quite a bit about it uh, in your sermon, but why is that so dangerous? Well, it, it it's the precursor to dull of heart or hard hearts, mm-hmm. and uh, hard hearts that's that's destruction. That's the Hebrews warns all over of you know you Hebrews warns that you will be lost if yeah. you harden your heart before the Lord and Pharaoh is a great example of what happened as he hardened his heart to God. So dull of hearing is the first step towards that. And, uh, and, and the particular text Hebrews five says that you won't be able to get it. Mm-hmm. You'll, you'll never get the deeper things of God. You'll never understand more complicated pieces. If you can't hear, if you can't listen and receive from God. So, uh, yeah, heading down the wrong path. That's good. Absolutely. So I guess in response to that, what are some of the things, and I'd love all of you guys to speak into this, you know, what are the things we do to, to sharpen our hearing, so to speak, or to prevent the dulling of our hearing? What does that look like practically? Yeah, I said this in um, staff meeting, I think this morning, uh, that often we get calloused, mm-hmm. you know, uh, cut after cut, 
causes calluses, mm-hmm. especially in ministry and life. <laughs> yeah. We don't get out of this life unscarred. And so uh, mm-hmm. keeping our hearts soft means mm-hmm. uh, being quick to forgive, quick to show grace. Uh, I, I, I always say it's like not like you're doing it so, you know, really, really quickly every time, but maybe a little bit faster next time than it was the last time. Maybe yeah. you're, you're processing that a little bit better this time. Um, but if you can't do that until you rest in the profundity of the gospel, you can't forgive quick because you don't realize how deep it is that you've been forgiven. And so those calluses mm-hmm. grow and your hearts get hard and therefore you become hard of hearing. You don't listen. Uh, mm-hmm. You won't listen to counsel or the Lord. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and so we need to be cautious about hardening our hearts. Yeah. I uh, was reading this passage in the NET and uh, instead of the word dull, they said, since you have become sluggish in hearing mm. and, uh, I like that too. Just the like, you're going to be slow and dull to hear. So that the people, including the Holy Spirit, has to like really be loud and really hit you. Like, like yeah. how much does it take instead of being responsive to the still small voice mm-hmm. of like, oh God, I think this is what you're saying. Okay, I'm going to step out in obedience. And then if I'm wrong, you'll correct me. Mm. And so just that being quick, quick to obey. Yeah. versus slow and dull and and maybe you know maybe if we get it wrong if we are keeping ourselves open and we move quickly to what we think is obedience he'll correct us and then yeah we'll be corrected yeah so, absolutely I, I think just as an encouragement to people they really need to listen to ruben's interview yesterday that's what this made me think yeah of too. <laughs> absolutely um, that'll be released this week but uh ruben just laid out so well this very thing you're talking about yeah about yeah. what that means to live practically yeah. um, on being quick to listen and go, okay, Lord, I'm going to step out and you'll, you'll course correct as needed, but I'm going to be intentional in that. So yeah. it's really good. Uh, PT, you talked about uh, this concept in your sermon of knowing better than God. And we do it all the time, right? Use some really good examples of, well, I, you know, I did this, uh, you know, the Bible says to do this, but I did this instead and it was fine. Um, you know, and just the danger of that. Uh, why do you think it's so easy for us to, to fall into that mindset of knowing better than God. Well, we don't want to obey. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't think God's way is best, so we want our own way. And I think foolishly, you know, the opposite of being dull of hearing is to listen yeah. profoundly, mm-hmm. listen deeply, yeah. listen and and receive what the truth is. So, you know, the, the, the call is to have discernment. Discernment takes time to listen and observe and think and have your discernment trained by the constant practice of distinguishing between good and evil. So you don't want to obey, but are there not enough examples around you of other people who haven't obeyed? Mm-hmm. And how has that turned out for them? So mm-hmm. this is a call to wisdom and to mm-hmm. thinking deeply listening deeply and observing Mm -hmm. the difference between good and evil and what happens. And we've just bought into what we want and what other people want. Yeah. Yeah. I think you did such a good job of highlighting maybe briefly some of the misuses of this text in the past of saying like, well, we don't need to keep preaching the gospel because that's the elementary teachings. Mm -hmm. And we've we've moved on that Mm -hmm. to more, you know, to these more complicated things, but it's like, no, the more mature solid food that he's talking about isn't, you know, necessarily or certainly not only having this detailed technical knowledge of the scriptures and the biblical text. It's the constant practice of distinguishing good from evil. Mm -hmm. It's knowing right and wrong and being able to walk in righteousness. Like the, the, uh, the real work comes in from obeying, like distinguishing good from evil and then, and then doing what is right. And so I think that was so, so well laid out in the sermon that we have to keep thinking about like, how am I training my mind to distinguish good from evil? And then having the, the opposite of dullness, the Mm -hmm. listening, the quick approach to obey, even if it's, even if it's really hard Yeah, and that, that, that's the meat of this. The solid food is what's the next extreme step of obedience you have to take it's not like what complicated knowledge can you now understand and hmm. you can speak Greek and Hebrew and know all these Bible facts. Like that's not what this is talking about. It's like the, because you have the essential understandings of the gospel, you put on the helmet of salvation, you're thinking through the gospel. Now what is God calling you to do and how is he calling you to live? No, absolutely. 
So uh, kind of on that note, have, have you guys ever found yourself kind of caught up in that train of thought of knowing better than God and then having to kind of course correct? Is that been something yeah like this morning last night yeah (laughs) like (laughs) actually Mm -hmm. like really recognizing this like this is a destructive train of thought stop Mm -hmm. thinking that it's wrong you know that's wrong you know if you indulge yourself in thinking that way you know where this is gonna go stop it obey and choose to choose to think about what is good and holy yeah 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 i shared this at uh the devotion i did for last staff meeting so two ago but it was um it, it was about the fact that when I get lots of things to do, a big long to-do list, I just go like, okay, let's go, Nate. And I just get so focused on it that it becomes all about me and doing the next thing and me getting, getting this done and me trying to push this ball forward and me doing it. And all of a sudden, God is like, yeah, you're, I'm, I'm, I'm his instrument, but I got to do it. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, yeah. God. Like, look how hard I'm working, you know. Like, yeah. Uh, and I totally, it, it's so quick how the enemy twists and warps, mm. you know, honorable service for the Lord to being like, Nathan's got to do it. I got to control it. I know best. And I, if I don't, mm-hmm. it won't. Mm-hmm. And so many of those little phrases that run, ring true in my mind. Yeah. And it leaves me, as I shared with you guys, it leaves me completely vulnerable to the enemy's attack because yeah. I've pushed God to the side for a second yeah. so I could try and get this done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, so yeah. arrogant. And it's it's the fall in Genesis mm-hmm. and it's still the same lie that we believe. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh the last thing I want to talk about was uh that piece on actually becoming a teacher. You had mentioned specifically that you should be teaching by now. Well, it was just what the Bible says. Yeah, that's what the Bible says, right? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> We don't know who it was. The yeah, author right, of yeah. Hebrews, for whatever though, that is. For though by this time you ought to be teachers. Yes. Verse yeah. 12, Hebrews yes. 5. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Do you think that this concept that we are all to be teachers um, is taught enough in our North American culture setting within the church? Why or why not? And and kind of just unpack that a little bit maybe. Well, our education style is that there's a teacher and you all sit in your class, in your chairs mm-hmm. and listen. And there is, there's room for that. And that is not a bad thing. Yeah. There is a spiritual gift of teaching. There mm-hmm. are people that are just, you know, you've probably had a teacher that isn't gifted at teaching, especially in university. They have a PhD, mm-hmm. but they can't present that anything yeah. very yeah. well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then you got people who just love to teach. You can see it in everything they are, AKA Sarah Braun. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> But everyone Mm -hmm. can teach Mm -hmm. the gospel of Jesus Christ. So there, you know, the, to be a disciple means to teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. And, and if you just get around, I'll use this example. It's about, it's it's about get around, um, knitting, Mm. a knitting group with knitting needles and yarn, a fanatical knitter, you know them. They sit at the conferences and knit mm-hmm. and ask them how to knit. Mm-hmm. And they will talk about knitting nonstop mm-hmm. or gamers mm-hmm. or sports people, which I've become now, or <laughs> anybody, a, a piston heads. Yeah. They love to tell you all about it. Mm-hmm. Anyone who's passionate about anything will be happy to tell you all about it. So tell me you're not passionate about, you can't teach about the gospel, mm-hmm. Houston, mm-hmm. we got a problem. Yeah. I love how we mobilized our, you know, 690 kids at day camp to yeah. be able to share the gospel. So oh, yeah. I, I, I just say kudos, first of all, to yeah. 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 It, you know, Sarah and our amazing day camp team and everyone. Yeah. One of the reasons I think it's not taught often is yeah. the gospel is offensive. Mm. Mm. And so to teach people and call people to go and share the gospel. Good point. People are so scared. Secret sensitivity is kind of the movement of the last, I don't know, 10 years of the church, at least maybe more. This whole idea like, well, we can't offend. What what about our witness? Just don't offend. <laughs> that our witness, our, our, our actions are better than mm-hmm. our words. Yeah. Just show them the, mm-hmm. the, the gospel. We don't proclaim it. Just show it through our actions. And uh, therefore, we've been so scared to offend people by sh- telling them they're going to hell mm-hmm. that we, we, we don't tell them anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I loved how Keller said it in one of his, I don't know, his sermon or podcast, but he goes like, usually if I get up to preach a sermon that's biblically true, someone ought to be offended. Otherwise, <laughs> I didn't do a very good job. And if I see someone walk out, I go, okay, God, I'm on track. You know, mm-hmm. I'm doing, I'm sharing the gospel clearly today because mm-hmm. it offends, it offends our flesh. It works yeah. against our culture. It works against what we desire to do and what we, you know, especially what uh, secular society is going to say it should be different than that because we live as Christians like, yeah. based on what the Bible says. And so when we go and tell people this, we're scared of offending and therefore mobilizing a church of kids to go and offend their friends at school this <laughs> yeah. fall. It'd be like, oh, how could you? Go, they're going to yeah. go tell their friends. Yeah, 
because mm-hmm. we believe that mm-hmm. this is actually salvation. That's right. right. And there is actual freedom, both on this side of, uh, of eternity yeah. and after. It's like, this is a big deal. And I think if we wrap our head around the truth, or as I said before, profundity of the gospel, we start to teach it different and mobilize people to do the same. Mm, that's yeah. good. Yeah. And I think, you know, sort of tying back to what I was saying earlier about obedience, I think that's that's part of it too, right? Is if I... Well, what if I drive around with the Jesus fish bumper sticker, but then cut someone off, right? And these are things we should we yeah. should be afraid of. Um, but to to speak and proclaim the good news, and when we really understand the the gospel, right, that it is not because we are good or we're good enough, or because we believe sincerely enough, or we're you know that it is because of Jesus' finished work on the cross, mm-hmm. then we can come with that posture of as we've said a number of times on Sundays recently, I'm just a beggar coming to a banquet I did not deserve. And I just want to tell all the other beggars where they can find food. And I think when we can come with that posture, it can free us to uh, feel excited to tell everybody much Mm -hmm. more than about how great knitting is and how much I love it, (laughs) but how great Jesus is and how great the freedom comes there. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the last question I have for you guys is based around this idea that if, if teaching is a sign of maturity, uh, which this is kind of what the scripture indicates, uh, how do we measure how we're actually practically doing with that? Like, how are how is our maturity? I think one sign, and I've been thinking about this a lot lately, but I think it was really evident over the week of camp, is the people you have taught, mm-hmm. can they go and teach others? Yeah. Right. You think of uh, all the youth kids at day camp who are the small group leader of their group of yeah 16 kids, but they're leading the 40 year old helper in their group and they're able to explain the gospel and coach those people. And then they're able to lead other people to Jesus on the Friday of day camp. Mm -hmm. And and just that that excitement of seeing the people you have taught being able to pass it on and teach others is a good sign mm-hmm. of of what they've learned and that they're excited to share it. Yeah. Would people around you know that you're a Christian and know that yeah. you believe in a risen, resurrected Jesus, mm-hmm. you know, King? Yeah. Uh, would they know that, first of all, at all? means mm-hmm. you probably haven't shared it, acted it out at all, anything, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At all. Uh, and and then I, I think the the other reality of, you asked the question, was maturing in mm-hmm. it. How are yeah. we maturing yeah. in, in doing that? Um, you'll know you're, you're, uh, you're, you're maturing when it, you, it delights you more and more each day to think on the gospel, yeah. to unpack it a little bit more, right. to rest on it. And it delights you because then you're going to be sharing it differently each day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go mm-hmm. guess how I understood the gospel today yeah, in right. this crazy mess that I ran into, <laughs> right. you know, and my, my sin yesterday hit me in a new way today in the mm. gospel that I have to share with you. And yes. you're excited to confess. You're excited to be vulnerable and open and unpack the gospel in a new way. Because it delights you differently. Yeah. Each day. Mm-hmm. It's good. You know, you're a successful teacher when your kids come home and say, guess what I learned today? And it's something you've been telling them for the last three years. <laughs> and they thought they just figured it out. <laughs> that happens to you every it. day Love still, it. doesn't it, Dad? <laughs> Love it. That's awesome. Oh, you just figured that out, did you? Uh, <laughs> no, typically, it was actually from my rowing coach. He was, the, he was very yeah. wise. He, he gave me all the way. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know what my coach taught me today? That's I awesome. told you that yesterday. <laughs> Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. And thank you for uh, just sharing where you're at, what's going on. Really appreciate it. And yeah, just bringing more and more insight into uh, how to live this whole following Jesus thing out. I really appreciate that. To our listeners, thank you so much for joining us. If you're uh, just checking out New Hope or you're listening to the podcast for the first time, I'd encourage you to jump on our website or app and uh, fill out a connect card because we really do want to connect with you. Uh, We'll talk to you next time on Digging Deeper. Digging Deeper.